the charm I think that you get with uh, a hand drawn film. Um, not that CG films are are aren't are charming. You no, know, it's just sense, it's apples but... and oranges. It's just such a different. It's just another choice of making a film, and I think uh, we all knew that it's a way of making a movie that will still grab an audience and still be interesting to look at. And um, you know, I always think like when my mother, she's gone to see some of the films I've worked on, and and she can't draw a stick man or she can draw a straight line with a ruler, but you know, she can see. There's something about it that she just can't describe when she sees a film that's hand drawn that, that, that draws her to it. And um, I don't know, it's just, it's like that untangible sort of organic thing that you get with a paper and pencil, the, the happy accidents that you'll have when you're drawing. Um, you know, the unknown things that you can, that can un uh, happen within the day that you're working on a scene that you just don't even expect. So it's the unplanned stuff that sort of shows up on the screen that can actually be a good thing, you know? Right. But it's, it's, it's like you said, there's, it's an artistic choice. The directors of the films that we do have those options. And it, it's, it's trying to identify, <clears throat> people will ask, and I'll say, well, you, you have a choice to go get your picture taken with a camera, or you can sit with a portrait artist. And it's, it's kind of like that, in that you each has its, you know, one's going to give you this exact representation, details, and the other maybe, you know, the painting maybe captures the spirit of, of the person who's sitting for the portrait. But it's, it's those kind of intangible, you know, aesthetics to the, the art form or the, the medium that you want to use that are kind of the differences. And Ron and John, um, you know, their background has all been hand-drawn. So, I mean, I think as filmmakers, they, you know, that's the way they envisioned this movie. Mm -hmm. And so, we, you know, we were all thrilled, of course, to, you know, have the yeah. opportunity to go back and, and, and draw again and animate that way. You know, our last film that we worked on that the studio put out in a, in a hand-drawn was Home on the Range, which was five, five years five ago. Years ago yeah. So for us to kind of get a chance through John Lasseter coming in about three years ago and saying, hey, you know what, we need to go back to doing what we do best. You know, it's our legacy, it's what we've done for the last, you know, 80 years, so why not, why should we stop? Right, they never, when, before the merger happened, John and Ed, I mean, had mentioned that as they kind of were sitting back and observing what was going on at Disney, you know, uh, thought, why are they doing that? Why, why abandon hand-drawn animation? That's what Disney animation's all about. So when they came in as our new new bosses, that was essentially the first thing he said, we're gonna do this again, and we should be doing this again. So in this country, though, it, it may be uh, on the endangered species list a little bit, because I think most other studios are doing computer animation, but it'll be interesting if this film is successful to see maybe what kind of yeah, you spark know, it'll spark it over because you go to Japan and, and hand drawn or you know two D looking films are are huge. You know Miyazaki and mm -hmm. as, as an example is is you know he's the king over there as far as and all of his films are a two D film. Uh, we actually stopped <coughs> using cells after The Little Mermaid <coughs> was the Excuse last me. last feature that we had um, the traditional cells and painting that way. So yes, tools have certainly uh, have changed. And, and just as um, you know, you guys have new tools here, but they're doing kind of the same, same process. But uh, for example, um, our uh, our background paintings for this film, instead of being painted on uh, illustration board with a gouache paint by a painter, we we still have the painters, terrific staff of traditional painters, but they're using a digital paint system. So they're painting all the backgrounds are painted digitally on the film, and I've talked to them. And they all love it. They said this is, they wouldn't go back to doing it on the illustration board like it used to be done. Yeah. Um, the inking and painting, of course, like I said, from Mermaid on, we went into what was called the CAP system. And even that as a computer digital system has become obsolete, like a lot of you know, computer technology just has a very short lifespan. So we have a new, I don't know what it's called, but it's a new, new digital system now that the painters still paint one frame at a time, but they have the ability to basically click and fill in shapes. They can enlarge a character to get into details and make it go back smaller and, and uh, do color lines and some things, artistic choices that we lost actually right. when we went from hand inking to the Xerox process. So, yeah. so it's just 
tools like that. Um, it, it's so your your story with Ray, your character. Right. Well, example. I mean, like, I mean, it still means we still have to use paper and pencil. I mean, right. the, the whole idea of doing a traditionally animated film, <clears throat> you still need the paper, you still need the pencils, um, and us to draw the characters. But beyond that, you know, we used to have to shoot it. And then we'd wrap it up, it'd go downstairs, and then somebody else would have to scan or shoot everything for us. On and a then that, film or something. Yeah. Right. And then now it's a matter of me sitting at my desk drawing like this and then turning around, putting it on a scanner, scanning it into the computer. It now lives in the computer program. Yeah. And for the case of Ray, the, the technology has really helped me out because, I mean, he's a character that's constantly floating or he's hovering or there's, I mean, he's on the ground maybe twice. And both times, not by choice, but he's on the ground twice in the movie. But yeah. but he's you know he's hovering around, and to do that by you know five six years ago, I'd have to draw all this movement. But now I can just draw him locked in one spot on the paper, and then in the program that we used after I'd scan everything in, I can just sort of create that movement. So it saves for me. It saves so much time, yeah. and the wings on him were done by an effects department, which they used the program as well that was able to allow them to, to do very minimal animation, but reuse it constantly throughout the movie. So in places like that, it's a huge help. Mm -hmm. But it never replaces the, you know, I still got to sharpen my pencil. Right. You know, I still got to punch our paper, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but it, the, the basic steps are, are pretty much the same way it was done, you know, in Snow White's day. It's just, yeah. but like you said, the tools, some of the tools have changed in um, you know, how we execute those, right. those steps. Uh, obviously if it's a real place like New Orleans is, it's, you, know, you need people to go and sort of research what that place looks like. Um, and we had our art director obviously, our directors, and they went down with a couple other people um, and just brought cameras and video and they started going around the whole area, the bayou and all of New Orleans and trying to take pictures of everything from like here's a, you know, here's a French Quarter so like here's a brick and here's a rock and here's a, some wrought iron in the French Quarter. Like, I'm yeah. sure some people were probably wondering if what, what, what the heck they, they were doing they're because they're <laughs> running around taking pictures of like, you know, just click, 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 click of everything. But yeah. they were just trying to get as much information as they could because behind those four or six people that went, you know, you have a whole staff of people that need that information and that knowledge. So now Ian, for instance, can take it back to the rest of his, his background painters and and people in the art department and say, look, okay, here's what the bayou looks like on a sunset. Here's what it looks like when we were there at three o'clock in the afternoon. It had this really great glow and, you know, all those little things that, you know, you can't do by looking through a book or even going on the internet. You know, you need somebody to go there and experience mm -hmm. the, the environment. I know with Mark, you know, on Mulan, you'd said yeah, you went to China. Yeah, I went to China for two weeks on that research trip, which was rare for an animator to get to go, but the producers felt it was important. And for me, I, I enjoyed the fact that I was, Standing in the you know Mulan's country and walking where she may have walked and and you know it just I, that was what I wanted to take in as as a as an animator is just what you know for, for like that project actor almost. yeah what's a bad day for an animator <laughs> that's a good question that is a good question um, well I guess starting we've talked about dailies many times so you you sit in dailies with all your other animators and the directors come in a bad day would start with your scene being projected and you're hoping it's going to get approved and it gets ripped to shreds and, and you got to go back and redo it. That's a bad thing. Yeah, day. I think, the, I think <laughs> I, I, I've been in there where uh, it's, it's funny to watch where someone's shown a scene and, and maybe, you know, you've shown your scene to maybe four or five other animators and they go, oh, it looks really good. I like that, yeah. Well, I'm going to show it in dailies today. Oh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. So you get the dailies and then, you know, everything's going fine. You know, the directors seem like they're buying off on it. And then all of a sudden, one person might go, you notice that maybe if Ray were like to come in a little earlier, and what if he were to sort of like to come a little lower when he delivers that line? And you go, and somebody else goes, yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> and then before you know it, you got the directors going, yeah, and I noticed that maybe if he was turned more towards the camera. And before you know it, you're like, oh. And then they turn and they go, so is that going to be a problem for you to do? Like, can you get it done by the end of the week? Is... <laughs> no, yeah, it should be fine. It yeah. should be fine. Yeah. So now you got to take everything that you've sort of done, and then you just sit, stick it in your throwaway pile and, and sort of have to again. start over. Yeah. So That's a bad day. That's a bad day. <laughs> <laughs>